thousands of generations, the gunslingers were knights. Sworn to protect us from the coming of the dark. These visions, as you call them. What do you see? I see a tower. The man in black. And the gunslinger. They're just dreams. They're not real, Jake. There's another world out there. I know there is. Who are you? It's you. You're a gunslinger, right? There are no gunslingers. Not anymore. Why does the man in black want to destroy the tower? The tower protects both our worlds. If it falls, hell will be unleashed. He's like the devil, isn't he? No, he's worse. You can't stop what's coming. Death always wins. Your world might be gone, but mine isn't. You let that tower fall, billions of people die. Do they have guns and bullets in your world? You're gonna like Earth a lot. All right, let's go. You clawing your way out of the darkness? Did you tell the kid whoever walks with you dies by my hand? I will kill him for both of us. I do not aim at my hand. And has forgotten the face of his father. I aim with my eye. I do not shoot with my hand. I shoot with my mind. Jake! I do not kill with my gun. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. You're very busy these days, so it's very nice of you to fit us into your schedule. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> I love being in New York. I'm actually, you know, been here for many years, so it's nice to come home. That's great. Yeah. Well, this is very highly anticipated. Um, do we have Stephen King fans out here, too? Everybody looking forward to seeing The Dark Tower? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, were you a fan of the book series? Did you read it before you were cast in the film? I did read some of the books. I didn't get a chance to read Dark Tower, but uh, obviously I've heard of Stephen King, who hasn't, and you know, just the fact that this, is, this has been eight years in the making. It took over eight years to get this movie made, and I think fans are going to be super excited and won't be disappointed. Yeah, so let, uh, let everybody know who you play in the movie and, and what it was like to play... Lori Chambers. Sure. So I play Lori, who is Jake's mom. And she is uh, really struggling with the sense of trying to keep ends meet, ends meet, trying to make Jake dealing with him and making sure that he, trying to decide if his dreams are reality or are they the fact that there's son losing her, his mind. So it's one of those things that I had to struggle with as an actor is, is how much to, because this is obviously a Stephen King novel. This is obviously um, based in a fantasy world and the imagination. So how much is reality? How much is actually fantasy? And uh, obviously what attracted me to this is Stephen King and Idris Elba who we all love, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> and Matthew McConaughey. And that cast was so phenomenal, and I think people are going to really love this. Mm -hmm. I would call this more of an action um, adventure movie than necessarily a fantasy movie. It's based in reality and in the imagination. It sounds so good. I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but I love Stephen King, and I love these books, and I've been so looking forward to it. And like you said, it's been eight years pretty much in the making um, you know, they were making it maybe a TV series and then maybe a movie. And uh, why do you think it works, though, as a film? What does that aspect of it bring to the story? I think what works is the fact that it's based on a theme that we all agree about is really good and evil. And what is that definition? What is good? What is evil? 
the man in black plays obviously an evil character and Matthew McConaughey was was quoted to saying it's it's more of a the devil <laughs> um and but it's also a story of a boy coming into his own which I thought was really fascinating about this and that you get a chance to explore different realms and different journeys and Lori plays somebody that's based in, my character plays somebody who's based in New York City and based in the reality of it and really grounds them in before you get a chance to see the different realms. So I would say that this is more of the introductory, um, a taste of, of what is gonna come still with Stephen King's extra movies and TV series. I know there's a TV series in the works as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know they're remaking it as well. So Stephen King's been having a, he's going to have a good year. Everyone's looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, for this role, you know, we've seen you play a badass action woman on TV and in other projects. Um, what about this, though, uh, was different? Because she's still, she's a mom and in her own right has a certain amount of strength in the story. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of people have been asking you, what was it like to leave that, you know, the hero behind a little bit and just play a mom? It was nice to let my guard down, truthfully. I've been on the show Vikings for now five years, and I we, we are now doing 20 episodes a year, which means we're shooting 10 months out of the year. So I only had a small hiatus in terms of trying a different project. And what attracted to me to this project is the fact that I get to play a contemporary character and somebody that is grounded. And I felt that with her being a single mom and really in a new marriage, is that the, she has to have a certain s sense of strength and trying to keep things together and trying to, to really um, make the right decisions for her son. And I thought that was really interesting, is to find that strength in an everyday world. So when did you first uh, get involved with the project? Was it an audition process, or was it would they see you on Vikings and think you were perfect for the role? I actually auditioned, uh, self-taped, when I was visiting my family in Toronto, and they called me back. They're like, we want to see you again. And, and a couple days later, it was just three days later, I was off. We shot this in South Africa That's in awesome. Cape Town, which, even though it looks like New York City, some of the exteriors were shot here but a lot of the interiors were actually shot in, in Cape Town. So you got to film there. What was that like? I hear it's Are beautiful. Are you kidding me? I was Town. surrounded by lions and tigers. <laughs> um, no, it was fantastic. The fact that it's Cape Town, an incredible working uh, crew there, and, and, and the fact that it's such a beautiful city. Mm -hmm. It's one of, one of my favorite cities ever, definitely, with the landscape as well as the culture and the cuisine, the food. If you guys like food, you will love Cape Town. Aren't there great white sharks there too? I actually <laughs> went diving with the sharks. I actually did a oh, shark dive. Scared. And and I actually got so nauseous from the ride over there that I actually threw up. This is probably not the best thing to say on live TV. <laughs> but my diver said the best thing to do to get over the nausea is to jump in. And I'm like, well, aren't, am I worried that these sharks are going to be attracted to whatever I ate this morning? <laughs> um, but it, it was the best thing to get over. If you ever guys have any seasickness, jump in the water and dive with sharks because it will definitely wake you up and you'll get over that in two seconds. So did you do the, <laughs> was it the cage dive or were you actually just swimming? with? It was a cage dive, Ooh. but I'm telling you, to be up close with these incredible animals and just to see how beautiful they are, and I'm a strong believer in the preservations for the wildlife, and especially with with the marine and, and obviously especially with 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 animals and well, sharks as well and and it's just nothing more beautiful to just to be in their elements to be in their water and in their space because you realize how vulnerable you are and how little control you have when you're just surrounded by such nature and beauty Jealous. I, although you need to I, go I don't know if diving. I would go shark diving. To be yes, you will. It was just Shark Week. It. I need a, I need a few months <laughs> to relax. Um, but what was it, well, how would you describe the set of the Dark Tower? Because you say it's in Cape Town, but what was it like to walk on the set? Because I'm sure it had a lot of um, you know fantasy elements, a lot of special effects, of course, going afterwards. But I'm just curious how they created the world. That's a good question. My character was definitely based in reality, so I didn't get a chance to explore the realms like 
Idris did or, or Jake did. But what was interesting is the fact that working with Nick, the director, he was very collaborative in making the character your own and was really involved in, in improvising and helping you find the little beats. Like I remember I actually, I was like, how do I find a moment to be able to tell the story that she has a strong bond with her 14 year old son, but you only have like a second of, of film time. Mm -hmm. So we created this fist bump. Let me do it with you. Yeah. And I just thought that was like a little thing that she maybe did with him. And I saw it in the movie last night and I'm like, oh, he kept that in, a little improvisation. And, That's cool. and I just thought that this, what's great working with such an incredible filmmaker is that he allows you to explore and find those special personal beats that we all have with individual um, special people in their family that you have that you, you wouldn't necessarily, you can't really write that. You just kind of have to find it, explore that. Yeah. And so how did you get, you know, the actor who played Jake, your son, what kind of things did you guys do to kind of create that mother-son bond, if anything? <laughs> we just made jokes. He, he's just such a great actor and so talented. It's funny because I saw him yesterday for the first time in over a year. And when I started, he was about this height of me. And yesterday, he was taller than me and I had heels on. And I'm like, what? It's one of those things playing a mother and you, you don't realize, but you're also, also really proud of the other actor. You, you, you fall I, on Vikings, I play a mother also too. And now officially grandmother, I'm supposed to play a lot older. And you fall in love with your, with your fellow actors. and. And on one hand, I felt like walk, wa watching him walk the red carpet. I'm like, oh, I'm such a proud mom. Yeah. And then his mom is like, well, I'm proud too. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, you <laughs> I think it was a little bit of a, <laughs> but she, of course, is definitely a lot more proud. But it's just, it's just one of those things that it's so amazing just to see talent really grow up in front of the screen, especially within a year. Those kids grow up so fast, guys. <laughs> Better watch out. Well, I, you mentioned Vikings. Yeah. And so I want to toss to a little clip that we have from Viking season five, which is premiering in November, if we can play that now, guys. <laughs> Welcome, Iva. I've come here for justice. Everyone knows that you killed my mother for no reason, except ambition. Therefore, I demand justice. Iva, don't touch me, coward. He is not a coward. But perhaps he understands some things that you don't. I understand everything perfectly. You murdered my mother in cold blood. I want revenge. I challenge you to single combat. Guys, we have Viking fans in the house. What a great show. Hi, guys. Man, that Ivor is like a scary, scary oh, guy. What's incredible is that we have a whole new cast this year. We have four new cast members of the storyline. It's really the story about the sons of Ragnar. And um, in that clip, we just you would see the amount of tension that, that the storyline enables to be able to unfold. And... You guys are going to love this season. We're actually doing a two-hour special on November 29th, I believe. Yeah. We're doing a two-hour premiere. So. That's awesome. Well, we're happy to see Lagather back because yeah. you are such a dynamic, incredible character on the show. I love you, and I love watching you. Um, but, you know, last season we lost a lot of characters, including the main character, or what they'd say the main character of Ragnar. So how will you guys kind of, you said you have new characters coming in. Um, what will season five be about? What will be the storyline? And I know with the sons, and especially with Iver, what Ivor did after he killed his brother, that can't be too good for their um, dynamic. Well, it's just, I think what's great about Vikings is the fact that it's written by one sole writer. At the end of this, believe it or not, in season five, 
Michael Hurst, who's our creator and writer, has written now 69 hours of television all by himself, which is incredible. That's almost unheard of in television. But he has a brilliant way of, of exploring each and every character to the fullest potential. And with Lagertha, you can see her in that clip that she is now queen. And she has her own power. And um, I will tell you this, that it, it will be challenged. And the question is, how is she going to deal with that? And you also see a big physical transformation with her as well. Because now it, it, it should be different within the Viking world to have a woman in power. How did you go about playing that, you know, being the queen um, and taking over control? That's a great question. I felt that I really need to, needed to draw my own experiences. I started my first um, business at the age of 16. I started a Taekwondo school in Toronto. And I had three Taekwondo schools by the time I was 21 all around Toronto. I, before I was an actress, I started teaching actors on movie sets, martial arts. So being a woman who is in a position of authority and having her students come into the room and actually have to bow down to her and being a little blonde girl at the age of 17 and trying to earn that respect, it was a great training tool for this character, I felt like. It was definitely gave me um, things that I can draw from my past, is how do I earn that respect? And especially as a woman ruler, I felt that I didn't want to necessarily push it. I think that there's a different way of ruling. I felt that Lagertha would be more of a strategic ruler than necessarily a ruler that needed to to have revenge or needed to have bloodshed. So I wanted to make different choices. Obviously with, with a woman and with such authority, there's always issues of other people taking, or get, taking her seriously and getting the respect that she feels that she deserves. And being a woman and also having to deal with male counterparts that would want to necessarily usurp her. And, um, and that would I would probably relate to some of my friends who are women that are running their own businesses or mothers that are at home and juggling um, sing being a, a single mother or a mother and still running a, a job and rushing to work and trying to do it all. And I felt that that is something that I really tried to uh, absorb and, and bring into Lagertha this season. Yeah. So Taekwondo, that's pretty yes. cool. How long have you been doing Taekwondo? I started at seven and I, it was my first love. I got my first black belt at the age of 13. And I got my, I got a third degree black belt in Taekwondo, second degree in karate. I got, I became a licensed bodyguard. And, which is... She could kick my ass if I say anything <laughs> bad on the stage right now. You know, it's funny because I just finished Comic-Con and they gave me a bunch of bodyguards. And I'm like, hey, I got this. <laughs> I'm like, I don't need this. I'm like, I got this. It's one of those things that I'm like, I feel okay. Thank you. <laughs> Even though I'm wearing high heels and a pretty dress, but... Um, it's it's one of those things that I grew up and I felt I felt I felt every woman should have at least the knowledge of how to defend themselves. I teach women self defense, it's still a very big passion of mine. I taught all of the actors and crew members, female crew members in Ireland where we shoot our show self defense. It was just something I wanted to do to give back and I feel that every woman should have that knowledge. You don't necessarily have to be big and strong. You if you have the knowledge of how your body works and how to be able to either talk your way out of situations or know the DNA or know joint manipulation or pressure points, you will give yourself the knowledge and power you need to be able to walk down the streets of New York with your head up high. Kudos to you. That's awesome. I'm going to take a self-defense class with you. <laughs> you should do it. That'd be fun. <laughs> so it must be great for you to play this role then because you get to do so many incredible stunts and fight scenes and and play a woman who, who does kick some serious ass. I love it. I'll yeah. be honest with you. I, half the time if I'm on set, I don't realize what's my blood and what's stage blood. <laughs> and I wouldn't trade it for the world. I don't have a stunt double and I refuse to have one. And I um, I do all my own stunts and... And it's fun to kick some ass. I'll tell you that. It's definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> it's great to see a woman on a, a show like this do the fighting. Um, because we don't normally see that in period pieces and things like this. But I guess it was the Vikings. and You know, a lot of people actually thought that that was a myth. But they I mean, last year I ended up going to Sweden. And they actually dug up a, an old 
uh, grave site, which they thought a king was buried because he was buried in such a high stature of he, with with horse heads and a lot of armor, and he was positioned right. But for for 50 years, they thought it was a king until just recently they discovered and they did tests on the pelvis, which is another way of also testing the DNA versus the the, the teeth, is they found out that it was actually a female warrior. And I was joking. I'm like, this must be Lakrata. <laughs> <laughs> pretty strong. Um, what do you think of your journey as this uh, as Lagatha from season one to season five? How has she progressed, and what can we see this season that might surprise or kind of throw viewers off a little bit? Because you said there might be a little bit of a physical change. And what's great about television, and this is something that I feel so blessed to be part of some a show like Vikings, is that when I originally signed on to this show, they told me it was a male demographic show. You're the wife of the king and that's it. And I think I was supposed to die in season two. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I mean, maybe I'm just too stubborn or pigheaded or too uh, strong or whatever it is. Now, five years later, I'm still here. And what's fantastic about it is that there's, because it's five years, you get a chance to explore so many different aspects of your character and try on different hats, try on different, um, parts of situations and, and circumstances that allow you to transform but still keep an unauthentic, truthful uh, point of view. And that's what's the beauty of television filmmaking. And I really truly feel that this is not television. This is epic storytelling. And that's what I think is different than other TV shows that are more procedural. But Vikings, it, when you come on set, when you see the hardworking crew, you see the 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 talent that goes into the hair and the makeup that both of them just got nominated for Emmys or set design or the incredible crew members that are literally pulling up these cranes up a mountain in Ireland, you see the amount of hard work that is why the show is what it is today. It must be fun for you to sit in that hair and makeup chair and, and the wardrobe. It's incredible, your costumes and your hair design. Fun, but after five years, you're like, get this thing done. How long, you, how long are you in the chair for? It takes me, well, we got it down to 45 minutes in the hair and makeup. There's very little makeup. It's just blood and dirt. Which uh, is great. So, but it actually takes just as long to remove. Yeah. Um, and this year, Lagatha has extra stuff. So I'm not going to. So I'm actually in the wrap chair which is the, after a shooting, what you have a little longer than it actually takes me to get ready for work. So I'm going to throw that out there if you guys can guess what it is. <laughs> Crazy. And so before I go, uh, I want to talk about your other project. But I do want to know, uh, Jonathan Reese Myers joined the show. And everyone's super excited because he had worked with Michael on The Tudors. And they're kind of reuniting. What can you tell us about what his character is going to be up to uh, this season? We saw a little bit of a glimpse of him in the finale. But we're still unsure. Jonathan Reese Myers, Lagertha has a lot of scenes with him actually, so I'm definitely going to throw that out there. But he's such an interesting character. His character, um, he plays Bishop Heckmond, who is not only a bishop but also a warrior. And he has a lot of, he struggles in terms of his faith and religion and also his life purpose. And you will see that struggle manifest on screen as well going to be good. Mm. Uh, before I go to audience Q&A, I want you to tell everyone about your new project, which is Call of Duty World War II with like zombies and a video game. It sounds awesome. Do you guys play video games? <laughs> Do you guys play Call of Duty? Yeah. Well, I'm super excited about this. This is um, the next, I guess, World War II game, and they're building my my avatar right now, which is great because I get a chance to approve the likeness and but it's crazy the amount of technology that goes into it. And it actually looks like you and the movement and they capture your performance. And I, I'm just blown away about the, the amount of gamers out there and how invested you guys all are in the characters and, and the storyline. And it's incredible to be part of something so big and so fantastic. Yeah, what was that like to, uh, you know, so they use your likeness and, of course, your voice. What was it like to, to be put into a video game. It must be a little strange. You know, they called me and they're like, Catherine, we really want you to be the next Call of Duty. And um, it was a straight offer. And I'm like, well, I called up my brother. I'm like, hey, Adam, what do you think? Should I do Call of Duty? 
And he's like, hell yeah. <laughs> so, of course, if my brother says I have to do it, I have to do it. And I'm so glad I did because I ended up now, like, literally going to friends' house, playing Call of Duty. And I even told, I told a, a friend of mine who was, like, you know, mad at me about something. I'm like, you can kill me over and over again <laughs> in, the, in the game. But so it's one way of getting back at me. So... Um, but it's it's going to be amazing. It's coming out in November, and there's going to be different storylines coming out. And hopefully you guys are excited to play. That's awesome. Well, you have awesome things coming up in November, because Vikings is coming back, too. So that's great. Yeah. Um, let's open it up to some audience questions. Hi, Catherine. Hi. So you mentioned that you used to teach Taekwondo on I film did. sets. And I wondered, was that when you discovered your love for acting, or was acting something you always wanted to do? That's a great question. I started directing plays in high school uh, before I was an actress. And I actually ended up getting a scholarship as one of, uh, for a special thing in, in, in my high school and towards university. I just didn't know anybody who was an actress. And I thought that that was such a fantasy that I couldn't grab. So I never thought I could do it because I wasn't exposed to it. And teaching martial arts on movie sets allowed me to go into that world, and I remember I was teaching Jennifer Jason Lee on a movie, a David Cronenberg's movie with Jude Law, his first movie in, in uh, North America, and I was being, I was on set, I'm like, every day is different. This is so amazing. You get new hair and makeup, and you get to play, and you get to craft, and you get to explore, and I remember I couldn't afford headshots because I was really broke then, and I ended up convincing the set photographer to shoot me in the backfield of the studio in the field and I would give her taekwondo classes oh. that is that was our exchange and now cut to many years later and I'm here that's awesome what a cool story who's next uh, hey Catherine I was wondering uh, did you get to did you read Dark Tower or get to read it before or after filming the movie and uh, did you get to meet Stephen King Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to meet Stephen King, but obviously when you approach a certain script, you look at it as an independent vehicle in terms of storytelling. So even though what was written um, on the books, I for me, I got casted really quickly, so I didn't get a chance to read the books, unfortunately. But of course, I'm a big fan of Stephen King, um, but the Dark Tower books specifically. And But when you read the screenplay, you have to make creative choices to be able to uh, explore and try to be able to tell the story uh, to story the best way possible. So, of course, Stephen King would, would appreciate. Uh, but I had some freedom just because my character was based in reality. I don't feel that she had that pressure of with different realms and creating a whole atmosphere where she came from in a backstory. I felt pretty close to her. She's a mom who's struggling trying to make the right decisions for her son. I felt um, I had a lot of freedom to be able to create. We have time for one more. Here we go. Hi. Uh, since you've been doing Taekwondo and Karate, what's your favorite move to teach or do? Ooh, that's a good question. Favorite move? Well, you're going to get have to come up here. Yeah. I'm going to have to I'll teach you. <laughs> Oh boy, now I got to pick one of my favorite moves. You know what? It's going to have to be. Ooh. Well, you're going to have to come here and hold this so I can be able to talk to this. So, if someone's choking you, which you can choke me, okay. the best thing to do is actually you're going to you're going to bring your jaw your jaw in to be able to increase the um the windpipe to be able to breathe, and okay. you would literally use your body to turn. You lock them in an arm lock, and what's in front of you? What would I use next? Let's see if I can figure that out. Ooh. Right there. And what else is there? <laughs> so, <laughs> give her a big hand. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I was not expecting that, but it's just knowledge and knowing how your body works, knowing the joints. And I truly feel that, that every woman, every man should have that knowledge and be able to defend yourself. 
That is so cool that you you started off that way and now you're on a successful show and in a, in a big movie. So congratulations. Thank you so much for being here. Dark Tower is out Friday and Vikings comes back November 29th and Call of Duty's out November. So lots to look forward to. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs>